Trinidad is considered one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. Carr is in a position to fulfill the promise that at one time seemed to be his destiny. Will Trinidad retain his title and his status, or will this be Carr's rise to boxing's ruling class? The IBF welterweight championship is next. Back down the ringside once again, here's Steve. Thank you, Jim. Felix Trinidad, who turns 22 in exactly four weeks, continues to receive rave reviews for his performances in the ring. Many who followed his impressive career are starting to believe he is a significant presence on the world stage of boxing, combining explosive punching power with cat-like quickness plus great heart. We saw a true illustration of that heart when he bounced back from a second-round knockdown to KO Yuri Boy Compass in the fourth round of his last fight. In a way, Obacar can relate to Trinidad's early success. Carr started his career like a bullet, turning pro at 17. Very active early on, 24 fights in his first 27 months, 10 KOs in his first 12 fights. He was put in with some rugged and stiff veterans early on and received quite an education, but then Carr leveled off. Perhaps it was overexposure or reading too many press clippings or being too preoccupied with a title shot. Frustrated, Carr lost focus. And now he feels he's back in sync and ready for his first title shot, a title shot that he feels is long overdue. Carr knows what it's like to be in the spotlight early, but now it's Trinidad who's the star and the champion. And Bernie, why was it that Trinidad reached a world championship before Carr, do you think? Simply because his management team seized the moment. While Carr was tap dancing around, changing managers, and couldn't decide whether to fight Blocker, no problem with Trinidad's guys. They said, I'll go, and Trinidad went in. I think... The difference is in these two fighters, one's consistent and one is inconsistent. Does Trinidad have the edge because of all the championship experience? He's got the edge because he performs consistently to the best of his abilities. Obacar sometimes does and sometimes doesn't. In a, in a challenge between those two, I'll take the guy that consistently does his best over an in-and-out fighter. All right, we turn again to our resident strategist, Bobby Chess. Compare and contrast the styles of Trinidad and Carr. Well, Trinidad's the taller of the two. He's a kind of a classic come-forward boxer puncher with a little more of the emphasis on puncher. He is a tremendous puncher. Obakar can move from side to side, inside, outside. He can be a power puncher or a speedster and a trickster on the outside. The fact that they're both undefeated, they're both in a tremendous position right now. They're a lot of pride. They're youth on the line. I think this has the makings. They're both on the money of one of the fights of the year. Do these styles make for a KO fight or a distance fight? I think the form that this fight's going to take shape in is going to be in that of Obakar. What he does will dictate how this fight goes. I think if he comes forward and he's pressing, I think this fight's going to end in a late round knockout either way, depending on who's on their game. Conversely, if Carr decides to be outside smarter to try that trickster stuff that he's known for in his speed, this could be a decision fight again either way, depending on who is on their game. All right, Bobby, let's take our first look at the challenger, Obakar, a product of the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. The 22-year-old Carr undefeated, 32 and 0, 20 knockouts, rated number two by the IBF, number four by the WBA, following the fast start of Korea. That tailspin, one of boxing's hottest rising stars, suddenly found himself stuck in neutral, but in 32 fights, he's been in danger only once. He had to come off the canvas twice in the first to outpoint Livingstone Bramble in 91. Tonight is unquestionably the biggest test in this young man's career. And now here is the champion, 21-year-old Felix Trinidad out of Cupialto, Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. Tonight, he's no longer a secret. He's a star. 24-0, 20 knockouts, 5-0 with four KOs in world title fights. Let's check the numerical breakdown as we zero in. De la Federación Internacional de Boxeo. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we present the IBF Welterweight Championship brought to you by Don King Productions and New Shows Incorporated, along with King Vision and SET Pay-Per-View. This bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. Presidente Robert Lee Sr., Supervisor Hiawatha Knight, along with La Comisión de Box y Lucha de Monterrey, Nuevo León, Presidente Jose Juan Guerra. He enters the ring wearing white trunks with black trim, un peleador de Detroit, Michigan, en los Estados Unidos. Pesando 65.8 kilogramos, he weighed in at a trim and ready 145 pounds. Con un record de 32 victorias, sin derrotas, tiene 20 victorias por knockout. His record includes an outstanding 32 wins. No losses with 20 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the undefeated challenger, ranked the number two contender by the IBF, 
presentando al retador número 2 en el mundo, el invicto Oba the Motor City Car. Y al campeón en la esquina roja. His opponent across the ring is the champion fighting out of the red corner wearing white trunks with blue trim. Fighting out of Coupe Alto, Puerto Rico, con un peso de 66 kilos, 500 gramos, his weight at 146 and one half pounds. Tiene un record de 24 victorias sin derrota, con 20 ganadas por knockout. His outstanding record includes 24 wins, no losses, with 20 of his wins coming by way of knockout. Welcome, the IBF welterweight champion tonight, making his fifth defense of his title. Demos la bienvenida al campeón, el invicto Felix Tito Trinidad. Once again, our referee, el referee is Robert Gonzalez. Look at me. Hold it. Clear the ring. Hold it. Hold it. Let's clear, clear it out. Clear the ring. Come on. Here. All right, car, come on. Remember to look at me. 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 Caballero, los dos. Let me give the instructions, please. Go ahead. Be quiet. Trinidad, Tito, mírame a mí. Caballero, los dos son profesionales. Su conducto debe de ser como profesional. Gentlemen, both of you are professional fighters. Conduct yourself as such. Look at me. Mírame a mí. Me protege siempre y me obedece mis manos siempre. Aleluya. Oh, yeah. You want to get out of the ring now? Or are you going to let, allow me to... Is it hurt? You want to... Okay, be quiet. Go ahead. I want you to protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Buena suerte a los dos. I'm talking once. Good luck to both of you, Ted Club. Que ganen mejor. Maybe the best man win. A very authoritative Robert Gonzalez admonishing uh, Panama Lewis, uh, who is uh, Carr's controversial trend of the man of the Braves. They're still banned from training throughout most of the U.S., licensed in Mexico. He served time for an 83 scandal, in which he removed padding from Louis Resco's gloves, resulting in a savage beating of Billy Collins, who shortly thereafter died in a car right. accident. Many believe the suicide. Oba Carr told us he realizes Lewis has the sorted past, but he feels he's paid his debt to society. Panama Lewis in the corner of Oba Carr. Here we go, round one, scheduled for 12. IBF welterweight championship, Felix Trinidad. Easy, relaxed style, but he can turn it up in a hurry and go to the attack with much pressure. He can initiate the offense and work off his opponent's moves. Carr told us he feels Trinidad has the perfect style for him to shine, adding that Yuri Boy Campus was tailor-made for Trinidad. He says, I'm not tailor-made for Trinidad. We'll see. And a man that started with a great deal of promise. I remember when Emmanuel Stewart first had him. He told me this kid is destined for championship if he just stays on the straight and narrow. And, of course, they've had a lot of differences, a lot of managers, and he didn't stay on the straight and narrow. And, therefore, Trinidad is the champion. He's not. But let's see what happens tonight. Well, he said he's 100% for the first time and only time in his career. And I think that we're going to see, because we have seen him in the past, very good. If he's at 100% now, we should see the very best of Obacar. Gar said, I'm totally dedicated, made the supreme sacrifice. I've been through the adversity. What... Ferdy was referring to the managerial problems. Carr recently switching from Emmanuel Stewart to Panama Lewis. Stewart uh, didn't want Oba Carr's father, a former boxer in the Marines, involved that closely. Carr did, so they split. See the quickness there of Oba Carr, who says, now I'm with a stable team, a new manager, Rory Holloway, great people around me. I'm a natural welterweight. I'm going to upset the boxing world, he says, because Trinidad's a superstar. Well, they're certainly giving each other a lot of respect and room right now. They're just huge distance between the two nothing meaningful has happened yet one of the great things about this fight is both of them have the tools to beat the other fighter if they minimize the other fighters effectiveness and maximize their attributes and that's what's great about this fight both undefeated both young both aspiring to greatness I think it's a good fight and both greatly talented and well said it's, it's who minimizes 
the defects and who maximizes their uh, advantage. And that's hard to do right now. Neither one are doing. They got a big fat zero between them. They've not done anything to each other. Both in the white trunks, the champion Trinidad with the red and blue stripes down the sides. Minute left in this opening round. Carr telling us he feels that Trinidad would come straight to him. He's a puncher. He says, I'll jab and move, use my speed. This is Carr talking. And says, I just can't let Felix dictate the pace. He thinks, does Carr, this will be a classic fight, the fight of the year. Well, off to a, a feeling out process. It's going to be a serious case of speed and slipperiness against power and aggressiveness. And we'll see. It's, it's working out to be a mini chess match for now, but this will heat up. And also that size advantage, it doesn't look like much with that tall ranginess of Phoenix Trinidad. He knows how to use that so well. And so far we've seen several wild misses by Ovalcar. Just can't kind of get the range of that tall guy. And that may be what's going to happen to him most of the night if he doesn't move in closer. Trinidad 5'11", Carr 5'9". Now Carr utilizing the jab as we head for the bell. Get the bell! Go! Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right? I see my hands 640. Yes. Very good. Very good. Don't forget the double jab. All right? And I want you to bubble weave now. All right? Don't stay up and roll. Huh? That's it. All right? And don't put the right hand to the back. Don't put the right hand to the back. We did. Huh? Same thing. Repeat the round. Estamos claro con eso. Oíste. Y la mano alta es ella. Él te está llaveando porque te quiere sorprender con la mano derecha. No nos va a sorprender con la mano derecha. No, ¿Está bien? Seguro. I've just told, keep your hands up. Remember, he's just jabbing you because he wants to land that right hand. Keep him at a distance. Now start closing in and popping on him when he, when he misses. Good instructions. And the instructions from Panama were also equally good. Let's see him what uh, results in the second round. Nothing much resulted in the first. Well, that was as close to an even round as you could get, although Obercar landed more punches, albeit they were very, very nominal. Down goes Trinidad! Well, just like the last fight, he was down in the second round and came back to beat Puckers. We'll see what happens here. Once again, the speed, Obercar said he saw in the Anthony Stevens fight, which is when he was down also, same punch, saw that the speed gets to him. He's open, but this man gets up and fights like a demon. I mean, I'm, I've never seen a guy go down and get up so clear-headed. 13 seconds into round two, a flash knockdown for Obakar. Obakar said he was going to shock us. He certainly just did. Well, he said, I'm punching now as hard as I've ever punched. I'm in the best condition of my life. So here in round two, and early in round two, Obakar sending Trinidad to the Kendall. And we all know what happened in the last fight. Trinidad came back to stop knockout artist Yuri Boy Compass in round four. And he was undefeated at the time also. Yeah, he was 56-0 with 50 knockouts. Oh, we know that uh, records mean nothing to Felix Trinidad. But something that Carr has that Yuri Boy Compass did not have is the excellent defense and great speed. Do some fighters probably just need a wake-up call to get their juices going? Well, I'll tell you what, there are fighters who've had a history of that, and I don't think you need a, a wake-up call for Trinidad, but sometimes he gets one anyway. That's a dangerous way to operate, though. He was kind of like Floyd Patterson. He always was down to begin with, and then he'd come back and beat you to death. Oh, two blows. Two very low blows. Felix Trinidad, perhaps frustrated. Really going south of the ball. Oh, what a wild left-handed miss by Carr. Looking to end it all on one punch. Yeah, Carr's getting a little bit overconfident from that knockdown. He thinks, well, I landed one and put him down. See, as much as a big puncher can land a big blow and close the fight out in one minute, those speedy punches tend to hurt a little more just because of the speed, like a bullet. The reason it kills his fist going so fast, these quick punches sting and drop people. And the strange thing is, Trinidad looking pressure after the knockdown. Less than a minute in round two. And now he's mad. His adrenaline's going. He's mad. He's landed two good, good hooks. Zinging hooks has Felix Trinidad. I mean, he, he keeps his eye right on his man. He knows where the punches are coming. Ducks him and then comes back with a hard punch. And he is the aggressor right now, even though he's been down. Carr keeping his distance. He's no fool. Less than 30 seconds, round two. 13 seconds in. Carr put Trinidad down. A flash knockdown. And that is it. 
for round two. Uh, let's see what they say in the corner. Let's listen. Well, why don't you take an air of obviously. One of those I told you so things. I told you to keep your hands up or else you get hit in the right hand. And that's what happened. And let's see what daddy says. He's right. He didn't keep his hands up. He got hit by a right hand. Birdie directly down the middle, right in between his gloves. You watch it again here. He's coming forward over car and he's quick. His feet are right between the gloves. He didn't totally see it. Caught him on the chin. Boom. He's on the pants. And his last look convincingly, that is a convincing knockdown. That's a 10-8 round if ever there was one. Although he came back and fought good, still that's a convincing knockdown. Young Trinidad does recover well and comes up fighting. Wow. Absolutely outstanding recuperative powers for Trinidad, who may not have the greatest chin in the world, but he's recovered from that flash knockdown wholeheartedly, it seems. He does have the great heart, as we mentioned before, and a great finishing kick. Oh, there's a hard left hand by Trinidad. You can feel that up in the top row. As we've tracing, been tracing the history of Trinidad's fights, the round after he's knocked down tends to be the most brutal round for his opponents so far. At least that's his history. We saw that uh, particularly in the last fight, and then he finished off Compass in the subsequent round. We also saw that with the Anthony Stevens fight, and tracing back even further, I was told by Emil Shade, same thing happened to someone else that knocked him down, he knocked out the very next round. The unique history. You know, the temperature here is so cold. I mean, I'm sitting in this chair doing all I can to not flatter my teeth. And the fighters come from the dressing room, which is warm and heated, sweating to here. They have to wait a little bit before the fight. You might think that some of them just can't get heated up and in tune right away, and that they still may be a little cold. That's true, except he keeps getting knocked down in Puerto Rico in his hotel. I mean, this guy is just not one of those kind of guys that starts to fight out too, too fast. But once he gets going, as he's doing right now, he's controlling, he's uh, leading, he's doing the aggressive moves. Obelkar has got to go come back to taking command of the, of the fight. Well, the interesting thing is, halfway through round three, Felix Trinidad was put on his rear end uh, in the second round, but you get the feeling that he is about to pounce on Obelkar. And that this thing could turn fast. I think Obelkar is getting that feeling. Yeah. Another, another nice left hook by Trinidad. He's trying to find a little bit of a home with that. See, what's going to happen here, we can't, Trinidad cannot let himself just relax and walk to him, because Obelkar is so quick, he springs forward, and that's how he caught Trinidad in the first place. Chopping right by Obakar, looking for uh, more of the same from round two, but that time, Trinidad too fast. Oh. A wild looping left by Trinidad that missed by a mile. Something you seldom see. He har hardly ever does he miss by that much. Very economical with his punches and very accurate with his punches. Very much like the Julio Cesar Chavez in his prime, oh, economical. Oh, 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 come on, come on. Robert Gonzalez, the third man of the ring. It was like a, a taskmaster, a tough yeah. teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes his tongue gets all tied up. You didn't know whether he's speaking English or Spanish. He comes out in the third tongue. He kept saying to the fighters, look at me, look yeah. at me. They want any shenanigans. Yeah, but you're allowed to stare a man down. Yeah. That's part of the game. Sure. Well, but he wanted to eliminate that element. Final seconds, round three. He's waited a long time as far to do any fighting. Watch the elbow. Long step elbow. Elbow. Watch the elbow. All right, uh, guys, coming up next, our main event, the WBC Super Lightweight the title fight. A very relaxed Julio Cesar Chavez with his son, Julio Jr. and Omar flanking him. The publicists like to call it the final journey, but Chavez contends his last fight will be December of 95. He'd like five fights next year, then step away. He'd like his 100th fight to be with Frankie Randall. Number 101, perhaps with Pernell Whitaker again. He is ready and poised for the last five or so fights to regain the form that once classified him as the best pound for pound in the world. Tony Lopez is the champ. All of a sudden, Panama Lewis is not in the middle of the ring, uh, of the uh, corner as he was before. I don't know what happened there, but he's doing most of the talking. 
So here we go into round number four. Obacar putting Trinidad on the canvas. Wild left miss again by Trinidad. Is it that Trinidad is off or that car is that quick? Uh, car is quick and I don't think Trinidad's all that much off. Car is quick and he's elusive. He gives you a lot of angles. And it, it, you know, it's the type of thing where you'll see coming back. Car missed two or three shots. They're both good young guys with tremendous reflexes. Car trying to put that left right in that combination that got uh, that, that caused the trouble for Trinidad, but missing every time he tries it. There's the right hand again. And it was the right hand that put Trinidad down early in the second. In all Trinidad's fights, when he's knocked down, it, it comes from punches flush on the chin, right on the apex. But his record proves how successfully he comes back. 24-0 with 20 knockouts. Oh, there it is. Right hand by Trinidad. Momentarily dazed Carr. But Carr, dancing around, seems to be okay and very fresh. See what Carr did there? He rolled with that punch. He took a little bit of power off it. Bent his knees, which gave the appearance of maybe going down. And maybe he was momentarily stunned, but I don't think it was that effective. It was the tail end, and he was turning with it. He buckled for a brief second, then he regained himself. Right hand again, overhand right by Trinidad. So what Carr has to do now, if he's going to be more effective over the next couple rounds, is get some more solid punches in and make Trinidad worry. He's got to gain his pound of flesh, as my trainer Tommy Parsons said, to get the respect. Well, what he's doing right now is losing and he's, he's falling back, falling back, and giving the appearance that Felix is taking over. And he is. Trinidad's taking over. He's coming on. And um, if Obercar doesn't land something hard to change this thing around, he's going in the wrong direction. And now Trinidad working the jab. That's three straight beautiful jabs to the head of Carr. Nice right hand by Carr to the body. Not a bad idea. Always a dangerous one. Though. Here's another jab by Trinidad looking to set up that heavy right. Let's see what happens. He landed with the big right about a minute into this round. Well, Trinidad looks like a coil spring. He looks like something just, just want to, you know, snap a, a, a coil spring and pop it. But he is really fast. And so is Overclock. Nothing to take away from Overclock. But... Two cat-like uh, fighters here the kind of fight where you can't blink, you can't go to the refrigerator or the, to the restroom because one quick shot and this fight could be over. Yeah, and it's Felix doing the chasing and open car doing the retreating, so. Less than 20 seconds in round four. Trinidad really coming back after being knocked down in the early going of the second round. Landing a huge right hand about a minute into this fourth round. His best punch thus far. There's that left again by Trinidad that jab he's on a roll staring down contest you're moving to your left and you're rolling that's it and you're waiting too long for him get up first keep pumping that jab keep his nose all right pull his knee on top of that come on you want him back but don't let him into the fight Give him a round thing, man. We work hard in the gym. Deep breath, baby. Deep breath. Deep breath. Step up. Bob and weave, baby. Bob and weave. If you go to your left, you got to roll. Let's take a, a look at what appeared to be that good right hand. It, 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 it kind of turned him around and buckled him. I, I don't... It, it landed hard enough to, to make him... You look at it up close, Barry. We'll see how... It, it, it was decent right hand, but it was a little more glancing because of the way Carr was spinning and twisting with it. I don't think it was a real solid uh, punch that would send the shockwave through anyone's body. Well, you heard the exhorting of Panama Lewis. He said, be like Sugar Ray Robinson. That is the idol of Obacar. That most is the idol of many. Sure is, but uh, the most important thing he got from Robinson, the ability to throw the jab all night. Here's that uppercut by Trinidad. Robinson, of course, another uh, Detroit fighter. Well, we've seen some blistering action here tonight. We still have Julio Cesar Chavez coming up tonight on this pay-per-view broadcast. Chavez and a rugged opponent, Tony Lopez. But right here, things really heating up in Trinidad, doing a lot of damage. This is a beautiful fight. Two wonderful condition and excellent talent. Uh, matching wits and, and reflexes right now. Uh, Felix has won the last two rounds. Even Panama has admitted that. And he wants his man to turn it around. There was another Lobo. south of the border shot. But, but the, the, oh, and his got back. But that one, the referee saw. Right in the cup. Well, and I'm not talking golf. 
No, that's the way we <laughs> teach it in the gym. They, they hit you, you hit them. Round five continues. We saw some good power punches from Trinidad in round four. Trinidad coming off the canvas in round two. And Trinidad stalking. Trinidad is outboxing Carr. Carr doesn't know how to get Ooh. close enough to hit. And he's missing continuously. There's a nice right hand. That's what he's been trying to do all night. He yep. tried to step back, step back, then rear off that right foot and coil forward with some power. Only affected the one time, really. Yep, that's what ruined him. He, he, he got such good effect from that, he figured he'd go back to it. But it wasn't. it's not working for him. Carr's got to come back with the left hook, Ferdy, and throw a few more combinations. Look, combination by Trinidad. Look at that speed. So quick. A little trickle of blood from the left nostril of Carr. Tell you what, that right hand off the side of Carr seemed to do much more than the first one he got hit with in the last round. And the pace really picking up here. Outstanding exchange. Get the punches up to Trinidad, says Gonzalez. Trinidad's Trinidad applying so much pressure. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's just, what he's doing, he's forcing Carr to fight with him now. He is so busy right now. Left and right by Trinidad. And his jab is a thing of beauty, and it's popping back the head of Overcar and discombobulating him. He hasn't got his timing right. Less than 30 seconds in round five. Great right hand by Trinidad. Oh, boy, is Trinidad coming off. He is teeing off on Overcar, who continues to show a lot of side-to-side -side movement just to escape from Trinidad. Now a little holding by Carr. Well, I don't know. Ooh, a left hand by Trinidad. Everything's landing. I don't know if Felix Trinidad knows how to spell Sugar Ray Robinson, but that's who he's fighting like. I'll tell you what, he's fighting tremendous. He's fighting some fight. Oh, after the bell, a slashing right by Trinidad. Well, coming up next, our featured event, the WBC Super Lightweight Championship. Here is Tony the Tiger Lopez being cheered on in his dressing room, awaiting Julio Cesar Chavez, three-time world champion, last held the WBA lightweight title and twice held the IBF junior lightweight uh, titles in his only fight this year. He lived up to his nickname, stopping a very game. Greg Haugen, while calling Chavez a great champion, Lopez says he will enjoy ending Chavez's career. We shall see. It is round six. Felix Trinidad looking like dynamite in that last round. Robert Gonzalez signaling for time. Now time in. Here we go. This is for the IVF Welterweight Championship. Felix Trinidad knocked down 13 seconds into round two, got up quickly, and he has been better ever since. Well, Panama Lewis just said to Obacar, said, you let him win that round, now he evened up the fight. It's even fight, he's back in the fight. Now get out there and do what you're supposed to. Get back in your rhythm. Well, at least he's keeping score pretty good. I got him ahead by one point, but uh, it should be about an even fight on scorecard. I have a dead even uh, three rounds to two, but the knockdown counteracting that extra round and making it dead even. Felix Trinidad coming off an excellent round. His jab continued to be effective. Go measure, Tony, go measure. I wonder what he said. I wonder what the referee did call it. He said something to Obacar. It's hard to make out. You can see Obacar trying to set up that right hand again. Now he worked a nice left hook inside. A stinging left by Obacar that got in. Now another good left hook by Carr. Beginning to come on a little bit now. Right hand just missed. What head movement by Trinidad to elude that punch. And a wild left. Carr able to maintain his balance. He almost went down. Got to be careful there, doesn't he, Bobby? Because if he opens himself up, Trinidad's just going to unload. You know, they're both so quick, and they jump in and out and miss punches. Oh, what a back uppercut. I'm sorry, Bobby. No, it's okay. It's, it's the kind of thing where any mistake either one makes can, get, can cost him a clean shot and a possible knockdown. So there is not much margin for error in a fight like this. 
The difference is that the momentum is on the good Trinidad. Trinidad with the left hand, but Carr is showing a good chip. It's a good clean left, and then tell you what, Carr to his credit came back with a couple himself. Carr's 32 and 0, 20 knockouts, his first world title shot. He has been knocked down before. He came off the canvas several times to beat Livingstone Bramble. Carr beginning to bleed from the nose, that jab that he's popping that Tito's popping in there, Felix popping in there, is taking effect. Oh, nice right hand, hand to the head by Trinidad. He's got everything. He's got straight right hands, he's got hooks, he's got uppercuts. Has the entire repertoire. There's a good left by Trinidad, sending Carr back. See the power right now, Trinidad is starting to take its toll not only on Carr's face and body, but on his attitude and his resilience and his heart. You gotta find out just what he's made of. I know the car wants to win. Whoa, whoa. But Carr able to come back. Fired back nicely. Matter of fact, he got he got Trinidad's attention quite well right there. What a flurry to end this round, which may have ended just five seconds early. We still have five seconds left, and the warning from Gonzalez to Trinidad for once again, I believe, hitting after the bell. And here, let's take a look at a good left hand by Trinidad. The kind of work he's been doing. Look at that little hook right off. Makes him pay. Makes makes everything that Obacar try carry a price. Mark of an excellent fighter. You see it again as another angle. He's just coming forward, coming forward, and countering, countering, countering. Obacar's trying to be the speedster, and you saw a few good shots here at the end of the bell. They're still hitting each other. And during all of this, Panama Lewis screaming at the top of his lungs in the face of Obacar. And not Teddy not. Atlas looked like Mother Teresa. Yeah, not uh, nice length. Well, he, he sees the, the momentum go. Uh, and he's seeing that his fighter needs to be inspired, needs to get mad. And uh, I don't know what else he could tell him to do. It's just a question. There's too much talent in there with him right now. Felix feeling that having the edge and momentum, having the edge and speed and boxing ability right now. Well, Panama Lewis has a good reputation as a tremendous conditioner. Oh, oh, he's he's got got yeah. Car buckles and able again to regroup. And hit on high on the head over the year, just like you said, Bobby, before oh, that, that punch right there. Now, weak in his knees. Over punches Carr. on top of the head have much more effect than people give him credit for. Car holding on to the waist of Trinidad to regain his composure. And a right hand by Trinidad. But Carr unloading, fighting back. Well, Carr is forced now. He's cornered. He's forced to fight. He's a wounded animal right now that has to fight for his life. Blood coming from the nose of Carr. Carr uppercut. Carr showing a lot of courage here. Getting belted around and still able to answer back. He's still dangerous. He's still dangerous. <laughs> Round seven scheduled for 12. Funny shot with the left hand right to the ribs by Trinidad. What a to hurt. Baby face killer we have here. Yeah, he doesn't even need a gun. Oh, he just looks calm and cool. That's the midway point of round seven. Carr taking a beating in this round. Look at him measure the right. And still, he gets the hook instead. Right hand by Carr, but pretty much so systematic. There's a nice left hook and another one, but one at a time. He's oh. got to follow with the right. But a left counter and a right by Trinidad. That sends him reeling into the ropes. Combination to the head. Carr hanging on. Carr's hurt. Carr's taking a major league beating here. But he's showing so much heart here. There goes the mouthpiece of Carr off that wild swing and a miss. And it's coming right in front of us. Now they'll have to wait for a stoppage of action to pick it up and that's exactly now what happens Bobby Jez picks it up and here it is he hands it to Robert Gonzalez and Gonzalez will go over to the corner to wash it out and put it back in the park it almost mouth. landed in my cup of tea there's a lovely uh, thought oh god heaven and Panama Lewis taking his sweet time and he's talking to his fighter that took a nice sweet little 20-30 second rest there 
So, Trinidad continues to inflict the punishment after he went down in round two. Similar pattern to the Yuri Boy Campus fight. <laughs> round seven of the books. And Carr's face now beginning to show the damage. Don't give away this fight. Don't stay here and fight this man's fight, brother. Do you use that strong leg? Use it, brother. Use your speed, please. Oh, you understand? You're trying to roll a man right here too much, and he know it. That's how you get caught. Forget about rolling his right here. Just go to work and stay busy. All right, drop that. Okay? Uh, All right. Drop that. Drop that shot. Okay? Bring him out and I get a squeeze in there. Bajito, Costa. A ver, ya lo pegando. Y pullando. Está bien. Y pullando. Y comiendo mi tarjeta. Bajito, que se muera ahora. It's a now the time to punch hard. Go down low and then come up high. And it's time to, I hate to say, kill over that one set. Meaning knockout, of course. It's time to go for the kill. You know, sending in this man who is a baby face killer. Is Carr on the verge? Does he have any gas left of the tank as we enter into round eight? Blood all over the front of Carr's trunks, his own. We have seen earlier tonight in the first fight, you know, oh, a little argument here. I told you both the young ones, it's all fight, you don't keep it up. Punching on the break once again, that has been the bone of contention throughout. Now, you should have said that again in Spanish to Trinidad, because I'm not sure he understood. Uh, Trinidad doesn't care. He figures, he figures he's got the fight won. He's going to finish this off now anyway. Take a minute. Now, Carr still has some pop. He's got some excellent skills. He's got to get out of the way of the big right hand and that jab. Good right hand by Trinidad over the top. And then a low blow, but Gonzalez didn't see it. Yeah, he was on the wrong side of Gibraltar. Yes. <laughs> Left hand flush on the face by Trinidad. Just throwing everything at Carr. He's out speeding him. He's out slicking him. Too much reflex, too much spring to punch it. Benedad knocked down 13 seconds in a round two, but he has dominated from that point on. This punch is not penetrating by Carr. Good defense. They're being caught by the gloves of Benedad. And he's throwing everything there is to throw is over Carr. Uh, I remind you, we saw that first fight. It looked like Castro was completely out through one punch, and it was all over. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know that that can happen in this fight. Either one of these fighters are both, uh, I think, more resilient than that. Overcar is getting hit too flush with all of the punches to Trinidad land, whereas Trinidad has at least got his gloves in front of his face. And he doesn't get hit flush. When he does, he seems to take hold. Oh. There he goes, Carr, down to the canvas for the first time of the fight. Very wobbly. Big right Very uppercut wobbly. and a right hand over right over, right over the top of it. Yeah, the uppercut did it, Bobby. His eyes just went cross. He's got 52 seconds to get through here in round eight. Will he survive? Wild miss there by Trinidad trying to end it right there. That's unlike him. Now he goes up and finish down. He goes again. He walked into a tremendous right hand. It was a great timing shot by Trinidad. No three knockdown rule here. IBF rules. Can he make it through the final seconds? 27 seconds. Trinidad goes right back in. Combination of that foot spurting fight. And Gonzalez steps in. It's all over. It's all over. Felix Trinidad remains undefeated. And this, the first defeat in Obacar's professional career. And this may be the most important, significant win in his career because Felix Trinidad has been building and building and building up to these major crossroad fights. He had one with Yuri Boy Campa, but his credentials were questionable. <clears throat> Nothing questionable about Obacar, who came in here highly touted and had every possibility to win tonight, yet the win was significant and it was impressive on the part of Felix Trinidad. As I said tonight, we, he fought for the title. This is a future megastar. This is another Sugar Ray uh, Robinson. I truly believe it. That is high praise by the fight doctor as Felix Trinidad is hoisted to the clouds and he makes his fifth defense of the IBF welterweight championship and again off the campus to do it. Take, just keep your eyes on Trinidad's uppercut. This is the one that does it. It's a little sneaky thing. Now watch him come up. Keep your eyes on There it is. 
Now you can see everything is short circuited, and the next punch is just his window dressing to put him down. But that was what you call a classic. I oh, yeah. Watch it, buddy. Yeah, well, this now he's second. in trouble, too, and you know you got a finisher and a young line in Trinidad. He comes in and he's starting to land punches, chasing him backwards again. The right hand over the top, and he walked right into it. Just didn't even look, didn't even see it. Hit him, got him clean, back to his knees. And by this time, he's fighting on reflex. By this time, there's nothing left of Obakar or his chances, and it's academic. And so, therefore, he stopped, and correctly so, by the referee, Robert Gonzalez. So there is Felix Trinidad, who turns 22 in just one month, remaining undefeated, extending his record to 25-0, 21 knockouts, handing Obakar his first setback in 33 fights. It is back to the drawing board for Obakar after losing in his first and long-awaited shot at a world championship. There's Oba getting a consolation from the Felix Trinidad camp. Big crowd in the center of the ring, and of course, who's in the center of it but uh, Don King. Felix Trinidad again retains his championship solidified to Jimmy. Damas y caballeros, tenemos el tiempo, dos minutos, 41 segundos in round number ocho. Ladies and gentlemen, with the time of two minutes, 41 seconds. In round number eight, the referee stops the contest. El referee terminó la pelea. El ganador por knockout técnico. The winner by way of technical knockout. El still champion, el invicto, Felix Tito. So there you have it, Felix Trinidad, after being put on the canvas in the second round, comes back to stop Obacar, 241 of round number eight. Coming up next, our main event, the WBC Super Lightweight Championship, Julio Cesar Chavez is back in action against rugged challenger Tony Lopez. Have a knockdown before you can start to fight. Eso parece que sí, en la pelea que me han tumbado, pues, cuando me levanto, pues, ¿sabes? me levanto como con un poquito de rabia, y ahí es que caliento de verdad, porque no sé qué me pasa, pero el bolso así, el bolso le pueden dar a uno y, y se pega él. He says sometimes he, when he goes down, he, he gets up, but then he gets mad. Sometimes that's the way it is in boxing. It's a wake-up call. He's got to get up mad, and when he gets up, he's right. And does it. Lo que vamos a ver es uh, el, el segundo, tercer knockdown. ¿Era necesario? Was it necessary to knock him down the second, third time to finish the fight? Bueno, según el árbitro, la decisión del árbitro, el árbitro pensó de que Obacar estaba en buenas condiciones todavía para seguir combatiendo y lo dejó combatir. No, no he said the, the referee let him go the second time. He, he looked like he was all right, and he, but it was on the way to the knockdown. If that's the way they wanted, that's the way they'd do it. Um, él te lastimó en algún tiempo. Bueno, cuando me tumbó, sí, me lastimó, ¿sabes? Me lastimó porque me tumbó, sí, sí, se sentí el golpe, pero que yo estaba en algunas condiciones y cuando me paré ya yo estaba consciente de todo lo que estaba pasando. He said, yes, he got hurt that, that round when he, got, uh, when he went down. He was conscious, but the guy can bang, and here's the guy that can bang, Obacar, who gave it a great shot. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, Don, and uh, I'd like to tell all my people back at home, I tried, and I went out like a soldier. Real soldiers don't fall. Well, you had him in trouble early, big surprise, and you failed to take advantage, but that's because this guy is such a great boxer, you think? Yeah, he's a great champion, and I got to take my head off. Uh, it just wasn't my night tonight. Well, you look very sharp, and you, you certainly know no lack of heart. You tried very hard. Do you think you just got outspeeded? Was the guy just too slick for you? Well, I don't know if it was that. Out. This probably just wasn't my night. Uh, I'll be back. Uh, like I said, I'm a soldier. Uh, I'd like to thank Don King. I'd like to thank my manager for sticking with me, and uh, I'll be back. Yes, you will, because you have no shortage of heart or talent. Right. So we're going to take it. We're, we're going to take a look at that. Stick around and watch your moment of glory, and this is where it almost happened. Aquí. Sí, bueno, este, Obacal me dio una buena derecha. Él pega bien duro con esa mano. That was a right hand, and it hurt hard. No. Uh, well, I set him up for the hook right because every time I, uh, I faint him, he pulls straight up, and I wanted to throw the hook and come back with the right hand. And it landed, and uh, I was successful there, but I just wanted to successful on the uh, victory. But I'll be back. 
All right. Now here's where you got in trouble. Aquí es donde eh, Carr em, empezó a tener problemas. El uppercut y la derecha. Was that uppercut? What did it? Uh, just, just the excessive blows that I took in the fight. Uh, I tried like a, uh, like a real champion, but I just didn't come out the victorious one. Yeah. He's a true champion. He's a true champion. I got to give it to him. Take my head off to him. That he is. El, el uppercut fue el, el, el uppercut lo, lo puso en problema <coughs> y después necesitaste la, la derecha. Sí, este, le di un upper, le, un upper de derecha y le, luego le metí una, una, una derecha recta y ahí fue que cayó por primera vez. Yeah, he said the uppercut did the damage and the right hand followed to put him down and then after that it was all over as far as he's concerned. Yo quiero decir algo a Ovacal personalmente, que es un gran boxeador, sigue adelante porque te vas a ser campeón mundial. He said, keep, keep fighting, you will be the champion, you're a good fighter and he was proud to fight you tonight. Gracias. Ok. okay. Quiero mandar un saludo a la gente de Puerto Rico. Tengo un saludo a la escuela Gautier Benítez, a, a, la, mi gente, a la gente de Humacao. Y quiero mandar un saludo a mi familia, un saludo a Charo, un saludo a Cupey y a Caimito, que me están esperando, a Ignacio Caimito, que me, están, me van a me estar esperando mañana. Y quiero decirle que lo siento con el corazón, un gran amigo que, pe, que perdió, la, eh, perdió la vida en Puerto Rico. Yo lo he conocido como Wipe Curia. Quiero mandar un saludo a la familia, familia andino y a toda mi gente de Cupey. And that was, generally speaking, that translation was, that's hello to all the Caribbean. And now back to Steve Albert, who's right at ringside. All right, thank you very much, Ferdy. 241 round eight, TKO for Felix Trinidad. One uh, judge... Our next championship bout will showcase another pair of rising stars. IBF welterweight champion Felix Trinidad from Puerto Rico and the number one contender in Yorubor Campus from Mexico. Both of these knockout artists are undefeated and in a battle such as this, something has to give. He's a great boxer. He has a great record. He hits hard. He's an intelligent boxer. But so am I. I just see myself beating him just because I'm a better boxer than he is. He's a fast fighter. He throws a lot of punches. But I don't think he's fought a very strong fighter. And when he gets in the ring with me, I think he's going to have some difficulty. I know he's got a lot of experience. And he knows that I've been through a few wars myself. I think that he might be a little slower than I am. And I don't think he's faced a fighter with as big a punch as mine. I think that with my kind of punching power, that if I don't knock him to the canvas, I know that at least I'll cause him a great deal of pain. He's a very aggressive fighter. If it's power against power, the one who wins is the one who can take the most punishment, you know, the one with the strongest chin. On the other hand, if he's going to box me, then I'll box him, and we'll see what happens. I know I'm going to win, and I know he's going to hit hard, but whatever he does, I'll still be victorious over him. All I know is that on September 17th, the fight goes the distance, I'm going to win. If it doesn't go the distance, it's because I knocked him out. So either way, if I knock him out, or the fight goes the distance, I'm still going to win. This fight represents the future of my career. I have to win this fight to go ahead in boxing. If I lose, I may not get another chance. I've waited a long time for this opportunity, and I have to make the best of this opportunity. I'm looking forward to going in there and winning. Both Puerto Rico and Mexico have a long and proud... I've seen some goalkeepers with good chins in my lifetime. Let's take our first look at the challenger in the ring, Ramon Yoriboy Campos, out of Navajoa, Sonora, Mexico, the 23-year-old Campos, the former Mexican welterweight champion, is the IBF and WBA number one rated welterweight contender and holds the distinction of having the best record in the world, 56-0, 50 knockouts, the longest undefeated streak in boxing today. Campos now in his seventh year professionally having turned pro at 16, getting his first shot at a world title. 
And here is the champion making his way to the ring, 21-year-old Felix Trinidad from Cupialto, Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. Trinidad coming off the unanimous decision over fellow countryman Hector Macho Camacho in January, a seven-month layoff, also undefeated, and the owner of the premier, one of the premier knockout ratios in boxing, 23 and 19 knockouts, owns the eighth highest knockout ratio of all present world champs and perhaps best remembered for his total dismantling of two-time world champion Maurice Blocker to win the belt, his first title shot in June of 92. Tonight, a little over a year since he put on the championship belt, he makes his fourth defense of the IBF welterweight crown. Let's see how they stack up on paper as we go to the tail of the tape. The champion Trinidad at 21, two years younger than Compass. Trinidad has the three-inch height advantage, both just under the limit at 146 and a half. The reach, Trinidad, 70 inches. Comp is 66 and a half, so a three-and-a-half-inch reach advantage for the champion. And this fight is even at the MGM book. To the IBF rules for this championship fight, 10-point must scoring system, three scoring judges, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight, and the bell cannot save a fighter in any round. So here at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas, one down, three to go as we close in on the IBF welterweight championship between Felix Trinidad and Yori Boy Compass. Let's go up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Well, fans, we welcome you to our next world title feature bout brought to you by Don King Productions and King Vision in association with SET, Pay-Per-View, Corona Beer, and the MGM Grand. At this time, we present the IBF Welterweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, President Bob Lee, Supervisor Walter Stone, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem. Introducing to you the judges scoring the bout from ringside. Bernie Cormier, Sheila Harmon Martin, and Jerry Roth. Introducing to you the referee in charge of this bout. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Richard Steele. All right, fans, here we go with the IBF Welterweight Championship of the World scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing black trunks with orange trim, hailing from and representing Navajoa, Sonora, Mexico. He weighed in at a ready 146 and one half pounds, and his record represents the longest undefeated streak in boxing today with 56 wins, no losses, 50 big wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome tonight's challenger, who is ranked the number one welterweight contender in the world by the IBF, introducing the undefeated Luis Ramon Yodi Boy Kampa. opponent across the ring is the defending world champion on my right fighting out of the red corner he is wearing white trunks and hailing from Coupe Alto Puerto Rico he weighed in at the same weight of 146 and one half pounds he is undefeated in his campaign as a professional with 23 wins no losses and 19 wins coming by way of knockout Please welcome a rising young star of the welterweight division, tonight making the fourth defense of his title, introducing the undefeated IBF welterweight champion of the world, Felix Tito Trinidad. Once again, here's your referee in charge, Richard Steele. All right, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning again, obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Shake hands and good luck. The big question in this battle of knockout artists, Felix Trinidad and Yori Boy Compass, might not be about statistics. It might be about 
a test of who has the better chin. Felix Trinidad coming in 23 0, 19 knockouts. Yori Boy Compass 56 0 with 50 KOs. And if you thought the crowd was behind Gabriel Ruelas, wait till you hear the crowd get behind Yori Boy Compass, who was born and still lives in Mexico. Most of his fights have been in Mexico. We had him a couple of times. Oh, nice right hand by Felix Trinidad, who can box like a dream. Hurry, I was talking to Carlos Palomino before.